Hello, you crazy guitar players who might be here because they saw my video on one crazy lick, tons of different solutions, I don't even know what I'm going to call it, where that lick from Just One More, which is a synth line, was, pre was, was presented as a, as a challenge to some top-level players, and we actually have many lessons on each of them doing their version of how they would approach that. Anything goes, hybrid picking, legato, uh, uh, tapping, whatever you want to do, but get the line done. And it's, I never expected everyone to give me this wealth of different possibilities. And it also showed that some very, very, very good players still have to practice. They're human beings. They still have to work on it. They have to find out how to do it. Um, and you can see it in some of their faces. We don't see Tom Quayle's face, so we have no idea how much he's struggling. I don't think he is. But on some of you can see, ah, okay, they're, they're, they, have, they really had to work on this. If you don't know the lick, please go back to part number one. I'll link this in the description below so that you can learn the lick. Only then will you really get out of it what these players are doing. At least sit down a couple of minutes and get it in your fingers very, very slowly so you see what the difficulties are. Otherwise, it's just some players doing something that you don't know what they're doing. The idea is that you know what they're doing. And the tabs for this second and first <coughs> episode of this uh, series are below so you can download them and actually look at what the players have done. We're going to start this time around uh, with Steve Stein. And Steve is an amazing player. And Steve immediately said, look, I don't have time to get this up to speed, but oh my God, what a lick. And Steve is uh, showing his, uh, us his version. He did make one mistake. Uh, he didn't actually go down to the C, uh, but his technique is still the same. So he's doing... <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's doing that F. But his fingering still works. He just has to go down one more string. So it's all, it still all applies. So he's just doing... Because he didn't read the notes correctly. But uh, I tabbed it out for you. And uh, let's look at Steve Stein. Thank you, Steve, for participating. Okay, so I got this thing from my buddy uh, Henning, which you probably already know. Um, it's a keyboard part that he gave to a bunch of us to try and figure out how we would play it on the guitar. And I tell you what, it's, it's the ideal puzzle. If you get a chance, I'm sure Henning will be giving you the, the notation or whatever to try and figure this out on your own as well. But it's, it's crazy. Like, it, you know, it's, it's very much not what I would normally play. So... Uh, what Henning wanted us to do is look at it and and see how we would approach trying to do this. Now, being that um, you know I I have a limited amount of time to try and work on this, what I did was just take a normal approach. Although I I'm still not sure that I like the way I'm playing it right now. There's a few things that I would like to change about it, but it's so uh, unorthodox for me. So what I'm going to do is just kind of break down what I did with this, and then you can compare it to what everybody else is doing. I'm very excited to see how. Everybody else decided to approach this as well. So the beginning, what, what I've got here is this thing right here. So, you know, it's a string skipping thing. Most of this, because it's based off a keyboard part, is very string skipping oriented in my mind anyway. So what I'm really trying to concentrate on the beginning of this thing, because again, it's, it's not in 4-4 four, four time either in terms of groupings. So what I'm thinking about is that up strum on the on the third string. Like that. Now, it, it doesn't do the same thing for, <laughs> for very long, so it takes off again. So when I do, we go back, but then we've got this thing. So what I'm doing is simply shifting up a fret, and that felt pretty comfortable. And then we go back to this one, and then we move to this. So what I'm doing there is I'm, again, trying to stay positional. So when I come back, I'm doing that same thing, and then I'm reaching up with my pinky. And playing 12, uh, 10, and 8. 
<laughs> on the first and third strings. Then we go back. And we do that same idea, but this time it ends differently. Okay, now here's where the shift comes, as we go back from there. And then it moves up to the 13th fret. So it's keeping a similar shape. So I just stayed with that same thing, although it is kind of a quick little motion. Now when you get done with that, you gotta move into a new part. So what I did was I played 14, 11, and 12. So I come from here. And then right from there, we gotta go into this kind of big Paul Gilbert-ish thing there. Now I've got very small hands, so this is a very awkward feeling thing. And this is what I might change if I had more time uh, to keep working on this. And believe me, when this is over, I'm gonna still keep working on this thing because this is just a, a lot of fun. It's been very challenging. So we come up. So I'm doing 15 to 10, dropping down to the 14 of the third string, then drop, going right back up to the 12th fret of the first string. Now here is where I do a hammer on from nine to 10, right there. So I'm doing a pull off there. And then right here, I played either eight to 12, drop down to this 12, and then slide back down to the 10th fret. And then this would be my first note all over again, even though I'm not picking it, I'm sliding to it. The other way I was trying to do it was I was playing eight, 12, uh, let's see here. That's what I was doing, was, was I was trying to do eight, seven slide, which kind of repositions me, but then I have to do two of those slides which is fine, but I found I wasn't being very accurate with doing that double sliding thing. So I decided to do, do that, which I still don't really like the, the feel of that, but that's as far as I got with trying to do this before I made this video. So if I break this down nice and slow, uh, let's see. That's my first part. That's my second part. That's my third part, and then I call that my fourth part, and then that'd be like my fifth part. So that's kind of how I broke this thing down. Again, it, it, it's a it's a challenging little thing that to play. There's not a lot really, you know, in in terms of how much there is, but it's just really interesting. So if you get a chance, whoever's watching this, you should really try and do this and see what way works best for you. So anyway, take care. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Henning, for allowing me to explore this and see what I could come up with. Now, I had to have her in this. Jen Majura, one of the nicest people, persons that you will ever meet. And Jen can play. We actually kind of have the same background uh, in terms of teacher. We really did a lot of stuff with uh, Peter Fisher's Rocky Guitar Secrets. And when we, when we talk, it was like, oh, yeah, I did this, I did this. Like, so we approach things uh, in a very similar way. Jen cheated but i thought it was very clever how she cheated and also she didn't have time or probably the energy or willingness to get it up to speed but her version could be something that you could do if you had to get it done so let's look at jen and her little budgie eating apples and uh, you know getting the lick done Apple. This is how I would play the first three bars. Ta-da! When I heard that lick for the first time, I thought two notes were standing out. Octaves. This one. And that one. So, and because of its pointy nature, the way the melody is written, I thought immediately to tap it. But unfortunately, there was no open string tuned like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the tapping and use my HX stump and use a simple pitch and pitch it up one and a half steps. 
So that way I can play it on the B string. Yeah. Right, Cookie? Apple? Ah. Okay, the first three bars are pretty much the same. Except the last three notes, they change. But what all three bars have in common, they end on, in my tuning, on the 10th fret on the B string. So I'm gonna tap that last note every bar and slide it into the one of the next bar. Meaning, and then sliding into the next one. Sliding. Wrong. <laughs> My B string with the simple pitch now sounds like a high D string. Okay, the fourth bar is different. And I could do like this, one double tap here on the 12th, then a pull off to the 7th uh, fret. And usually I would use my, my ring finger for the 9th fret for the hammer on, but I'm using my pinky because I have to stretch to the 6th fret in my tuning. And if I would use my ring finger, it would be a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, it would be doable, but uncomfortable. So um, it goes like. And then I do a slide from 10 to nine. And instead of a double picking, uh, a double tapping, I use my pinky again. That way I have my index finger free for the next one when the rep uh, repetition comes. So I can start over with the. Does that make sense? And now the whole thing in super slow. Kind of goes like this. <laughs> Hello. My name is Gemma Jura and my right index finger hurts. Thank you, Jen. You cheater! Nice. Now we're gonna move on to Jack Gardner. He's one of those modern players. He's one of those guys hybrid picking and big jumps and uh, super long stretches. You know, the, the school of Tom Quayle. He started with Tom. Uh, Jack is an amazing player, great tone. Uh, I would call him one of the new school of guitar players. and. I had a hunch that that kind of lick is something that comes more natural to him than others. But if you look at his performance, he's he's almost biting his lip off. He's 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 concentrating hard because that's what this lick does to you. So even an amazing player like Jack Gardner had to fight with it. And then the solo that he that he plays afterwards is of course mind blowing, and you can really see his relaxation after the solo. He's like, oh, finally this Henning crap thing is done. So here's Jack. Okay, Henning, this one is a bit of a nightmare to play. So, 
When I first heard this without even touching the guitar, part of me was thinking, I'm going to have to use hybrid picking for this. Now, the reason for that, well, actually, there's two reasons. So the first one is the fact that there is strings given involved. Um, so when we do this, I could alternate pick it all like this. But really, did you see that jump there from the B string to the A string? I don't really like to do that if I'm doing strictly down, up, down, up, alternate pick. It's too much of a jump. For me, I prefer to let, you know, one of these fingers do that. So maybe the middle finger, I think, does most of the work. But it enables me to basically plant um, where I want those fingers to be before I actually play it and where the pick goes. Um, it's just economy of motion, really. I think that's the best word to describe it. So... Especially that one. That's such a huge jump if I alternate pick that. Yeah, do you see what I did there? Straight away I hit the B string. Now, the only other change I made to it, um, or I should point out the other reason why I use hybrid picking actually. Now, the second reason is that whenever I hear like a synth line, I always think of it as like it's running into each other. It's like legato. No note has like a strong attack or like a strong transient. It's like they blend into each other. Now, that's hard to do on guitar, but when I alternate pick that, I feel like I'm accenting all of those notes, which is not really like the tone or the sound that I want. With hybrid picking, I'm still getting some accents, although, you know, someone like Tom Quayle, for example, he'll brush and he won't get that. But for me, it just feels a bit more like how a synth would sound. So this. Now, it just, it, it's less accented than this kind of. This kind of thing just sounds a bit too much in your face. It's not really synth-like in my eyes. Now, the other thing which I changed then, or the final thing, was when we got to hear this part of the lick. This. So I think the way that you sent it to me, Henning, was like, it follows where it's like, you know, the, the little thing is. Uh, like this. Now that for me works when I sweep, but I don't like it in this line. Like that's how I'd probably use it, but yeah, to alternate pick that would be a nightmare for me. So what I like to do instead is actually just move that second note onto the high E string itself and do this. So that's the um, 15th fret on the high E, go into the 10th fret on the high E, pulling off, and then roll that first finger onto the B, and then pluck the, um, you could hybrid or you could pick that 12th fret on the high E. So, ah. Uh, now this is another thing which I changed. I slide from the 14th to the 15th again, just to give it a bit of a synth tone. And then you can roll those two. You could hybrid pick that, you could mini sweep it, I guess, economy pick it. And then it just all rolls back together. So the whole lick, I guess, is like this. This kind of idea. Hopefully that makes sense. Check the tabs, I've made a little transcription of it if you're wondering what's going on. But that's just the easiest way for me. Hope you guys enjoyed it and cheers for having me, Henning. Thanks, Jack. Always brilliant. As always, I said always twice. Now let's get to one of the only players that after 90 minutes sends me a little iPhone video saying, is this how you want to play it? And it's freaking insane. I would have never thought, and no offense to any of the other players, that there's still quite a bit of a jump from an excellent player that I wish I could be, which is all of them, to Tom Quayle. He's, he's the Quailinator, the Quail Master, General Quailston. Yes, he has his fourth tuning, which means the top two strings are not B and E, they are something, uh, they're C and F. And that might make his finger easier, but of course, Tom, in his professional teaching manner, tapped it out in fourth tuning and in standard tuning, and you can try both and see if it's easier. Tom has a couple of advantages. A, his legato is insane, so his legato notes you can't really distinguish in terms of quality or volume from his non-legato notes. He has a wide stretch, and 
strength in every finger for Legado, and he does hybrid picking with two fingers. So he'll he'll do the he'll do the banjo thing. So that means his, he has zero need for string skipping, <coughs> and he makes it sound very synthy, synthy as he points it out, but really giving all the notes uh, equal strength. So let's check out Tom's version, which is ridiculous. <laughs> So the main thing for me with this lick was that I am not a picking guy at all. So there's no way I knew immediately I wasn't going to be able to pick all of this kind of string crossing stuff. So as a legato guy, I want to keep all of this roughly in one position, which is impossible actually, but roughly in one position. And I wanted to maximize the number of notes per string. So that means stretching. So I actually decided to play some of these lines um, utilizing a slightly wider stretch between the 12th and the 17th frets. Now I should say that I'm in fourth tuning. So I have a C and an F as my top two strings, but I've given uh, the tab to Henning. So you guys should have the tab in standard tuning as well. So what I did is I started out with my kind of hybrid picking approach. So I started with my second finger on the 14th fret of the, um, the B or C string in my case, which would be the 15th for you. I'm not gonna go through all of these in standard tuning. You guys can check out the tab, but the fingerings are very, very similar. In fact, you can probably use identical fingerings for a lot of this. So I did the octave leap here by going middle finger with the right hand, then picking with a downstroke on the D string and then hammering with my little finger onto the 17th fret of the D. And this kind of jump is the kind of crux of how I'm negotiating most of this. So, oh, sorry. You wanna make sure you don't pluck this middle finger note too hard. Because I want it to sound like a synth. I don't want it to sound guitaristic and picked just for this kind of phrase. It sounded like a synth line to me. And of course, I think it was originally played on synth as well. I'm then grabbing the 14th fret on the G string here, and I'm then doing a pull off from the 17th fret to the 12th fret back again on the D string. Then you get this octave again. So there's this kind of like, uh, what is it? Like a, an eight note phrase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is repeated throughout the entire thing. So that allowed me to do that in all, sort of one area of the neck without having to move the right hand very much. So it's middle finger, pick, hammer, middle finger, pick, pull off, middle finger, downstroke. Now I do quite an idiosyncratic thing for me. This is something I do a lot. Uh, basically this little phrase here, I'm doing 14, 15, 14, 17 on the G string. But if you notice, I'm doing a little weird position shift with my first finger. I don't want to play these notes with these three fingers because they're a weak combination. Even if you're very good at legato, this combination of fingers is generally to be avoided if you're not gonna utilize the first finger. So what I'm doing is I'm hammering from 14 to 15. Then I'm substituting my second finger for my first finger and pulling off like a little position shift and then hammering onto the 17th fret. Now this gives me much more consistency and a smoother sound, but it's very weird if you've never done it before. You've got to get used to this. So we get... This allows me to very comfortably grab, uh, grab the 15th fret on the A string with a downstroke, and then get my middle finger on the B string or C string in my case on that 12th fret, you guys will play the 13th, pick it with my middle finger and then hammer on, sorry, hammer on to the 14th fret or 15th fret for you guys to start the phrase again in the next bar. So that first bar looks and sounds like this. And it gives a very consistent tone to the notes and also the way the hammer-ons and pull-offs fall on the bar gives the phrase this kind of very synth-like smooth sound. Thank you. 
Now the next bar is almost identical except that we go up to the 16th fret on the uh, C string for me or the, the 17th fret for you guys on the B string. So we get... There's that same position shift. Then I'm going to grab the 16th fret on the, B, on the C string for me or the B string. Now I believe I do that with my little finger be there for you guys. Middle finger on the right hand, then I'm going to do a downstroke on the 15th fret with my second finger on the A string, which again allows me to get back to the 12th fret or 13th fret for you guys and do this hammer on back to the beginning of the next bar. So that bar, that's a little trickier than the first bar. But you notice I'm doing that little position shift again. Now the next bar, we don't need the position shift, so we get... This is really hard, not because it's a harder phrase to execute, but because I get a ton of string noise. Anywhere, anytime you're around the 12th fret, you're going to get more string noise, because even if you mute properly, you'll get harmonics around this 12th fret, so it's really tricky to keep the strings quiet. So you've really got to be careful there and in my little playthrough you can't hear it on the recording but you can probably hear it a little bit of string noise on this kind of um, isolated version that I've played for you here so that bar or those first three bars sorry do that again there you can hear the string noise it's kind of hard to avoid I'm, I'm working on that so then the next bit This is the most awkward part of this whole thing. So what I'm doing here again is utilizing large stretches. So I'll hammer onto the 17th fret of the C string. You guys would be the 18th fret. So that's a hammer on. Then I'm going 15, 15, 12. Now you guys would be 13 on the B string. Again, check the tablature. And the way I'm picking this is I'm going D15 with my second finger and I'm doing a down stroke. Then uh, G15 with my middle finger and that's on the right hand that is, and then it's my third finger on the, uh, the left hand. Then I'm actually doing a down stroke on, the, on this note. So it's down, middle, down. Again, quite idiosyncratic, but it flows very well for me. Then I'm grabbing, there's a little position shift here, so I'm grabbing the 15th fret of the G string and reaching my first finger back to the 10th fret I'm doing a pull-off, and then hammering onto the 14th. Again, trying to keep this concise and consistent. And I do that with an upstroke, I believe. Yeah. Then I'm grabbing the 10th fret, which would be the 11th for you guys on the B string. I'm using my middle finger on the right hand to execute that. Second finger on the 12th fret of the G string with a downstroke. Then my middle finger is going to pluck the 14th fret of the uh, high F for me, or it would be the 15th fret for you guys, pulling off to 9. Now you've got to be careful here because you're going to bar across to the 9th fret of the B string, or the, or the 10th fret for you guys. Again, check the tablature. Sorry, that's a bit confusing. And so I'm doing middle finger pull off, down stroke, and then middle finger on the 11th fret of the um, F string for me, the 12th fret for you guys of the E string. And then I'm basically going down an octave to the 9th fret of the G string, picking and sliding. Then I'm using my middle finger to pull off from 12 to 11, so 13 to 12 for you guys. And then hammering onto 16. You could pick that as well, actually. Now that would be that would be 17 for you guys. And that allows me to pull off back to the beginning of the phrase again. So all of this is contained within a very small area of the neck. So one more time all the way through. So there we go, I hope that was useful guys. Thanks for asking me to do this Henning and I can't wait to see what everyone else has come up with. I would say thank you Tom, but it's tough to thank him for demotivating me on that level because I practiced it for two and a half days and barely got it down to actually record it for the song. 90 minutes he comes back, he's like, oh, what about this?
It's the, it's the Quail Master. Thank you, really, from the bottom of my heart. It was great to have you on this. Now, that was four more players giving you their take on the Just One More Lick. If you want to record your own, I put the backing track and all the tabs and, and all that stuff below so you can practice it, you can record it, you can send me your own version. Just record it and show me how you do it. Uh, uh, do a solo over the solo thing. Do, whatever. Send me... What you do with it, I'd love to hear from you. Crazy stuff at HenningPolly.com. That's the email. And maybe I'll even include yours into a viewer uh, submissions video at um, some later point. I'm still waiting for a couple of submissions from some great players, and I really want to see how they tackle it. I'm not telling you how they are. Um, who? No, pull! I'm not telling you who they are, because... Well, I don't want to embarrass them if they can't do it and then, you know, I don't get their video. I mean, that would be pretty damn sad if those players didn't, you know, come through, wouldn't it? Players. Some killer people in there. But that's at a later date. Thank you for watching. Keep practicing. Keep playing ridiculous stuff. And, um, animals at the end. Gotta go. Who's to blame in this game? Light a flame and let it glow. On the base full of rage, we engage the imposter god. Tell us for the righteous brother, make the cross and then the squad.